And I, I put the, got together with him and we spent, oh, I think we spent maybe 20, 30, 40 hours with the Becheras, mm -hmm. going over the cellar, uh -huh. creating the land, the menus, where they buy, how they buy. Mm -hmm. And they put together a program to franchise this and go national. Um, I remember through some of the people, that, uh, the money people that I could get through the mafia, uh, we were able to uh, get a million dollars to, to start the franchise and put the whole package together. But the Bashiras had the business in the family name. Mm. So in order to, to do this, they would have to have an agreement from four of them, Abe, Joey, Bish, and the sister. Mm. Who was Bish? You didn't, you didn't know what he was the older one, you wouldn't have known him. I don't remember He was Bish. the oldest of the brothers. And you didn't work? We presented it, it was a great idea, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but yeah. it would have meant for these guys who were still living in mm. the same neighborhood mm. that their mother and fathers had brought them <laughs> when they were little kids. And to talk about Jeez. leaving there and going and opening up places across the country, mm. every place we sold a franchise to yeah. would have to go to and open up. That's amazing. And what happened? Why are you guys? They chickened out. They oh. just did. Four oh. family members couldn't agree, because probably. They, they just couldn't, yeah, they couldn't come to the agreement. Wow. And neither of the three brothers were married. They were all living with women, but mm. not married. Wow. Mm. And that time is a problem. You've known that family since you were little. You've known that family since you were little, right? Yeah, Abe was in high school. You were in the me. same school. School, yeah. Yeah. And then you knew their family from the restaurant when they first. Oh, yeah. Well, that was my hangout place. I mean, <clears throat> I was working at Berger and Robert Williams. Yeah. And I mean, I might work until nine, ten o'clock at night. And I had, you know, your mother and I were really leaving separate lives at that point. And uh, I'd go down to the restaurant at the end of work. And we had a regular routine. Wow, you miss a big business. Guess who worked at the restaurant with us? See if you can come up with a name. Rosario. He was one, but barely. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Shaheen. Billy Shaheen was right. Yeah. Yeah. He was a waiter. He was a waiter there. And wow, his he was a waiter? John Pallone. Pallone. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Oh, come on, why can't I find his name? Caprioni? No. The insurance man. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I should know that. Most of all these guys were local Italian and Syrian guys, and they were coming up into the world by going to college at Merrimack College. And this is their job. They all worked at the restaurant for their, to get money. Mm -hmm. And at 10 o'clock at night, after I closed the, you know, shut down Berger, I'd go over to the restaurant, and we had a regular routine. We'd drink the arrows. Drink all the mistakes at the bar, at the Cedar Lounge. The mistakes at the bar would be at the, on the shelf, and they would give them another drink. And we'd have a whole roll of them. Oh my God, that makes a good lady. And then the boys were single. And most of the guys working as waiters were single. And you know, very often we'd get down to some strip club down on 28 afterward. That's very cool. <laughs> I remember the, wait the waiters working there were very colorful, all of them. What's the strip club that's still open on 28? You're thinking of the banana, Golden, the golden banana. banana. That I thought the Golden that Banana, was right. The place that you specialize in. Banana pies, banana bread. She didn't realize what it oh was. Oh my God. When she thought they made pastries. It's called the banana. banana. Yeah, I thought that's everything from banana. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, 
That's life. You guys like to That's so make funny. a movie. That's funny. Yeah. I like that story. I but, was I was with Kevin. And we were so good to me. Yeah. Because normally I'd go down there at you know ten o'clock, eleven, we'd have a few drinks. And then sometimes we'd go to the nightclub at the, at the end of uh, Essex Street to Capri with the mafia around. And sometimes we'd go to other clubs together as a group. And then we'd go back to the house. In Andover? No, to the, the bishops. The, 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 the house. house. Oh. house. And the boys were still living with Mama in the house. And some of the kids were still living with them. You were probably like another son to her. She would never let me leave to go back. She knew I was living alone. She'd never let me leave without giving me a jug of yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the Lebanese name for yoga? Yorti? I don't know. But you know how yoga's made. No. Well, yoga has to come from a certain, what's the word? Um, culture? No, not culture. I just was talking about those all the time. So, they ferment, the, the milk yep. is fermented. It's a culture. The it's gross. a culture. Yeah, it's a yeah, culture. yeah. So you and in order, in order you, you have to have the ferment, or whatever you call it, yeah. in order to start the yoga. And in America, nobody had it until maybe, you know, sometimes at the beginning of the 1900s, mm -hmm. when people came from Arabic countries or yeah. European countries yeah. and would mm -hmm. bring it with them. Mm. Yeah. And they would make the yoga. Mm -hmm. And the Lebanese, Mama, had her, she made her own yoga yeah. for the restaurant and for the house. Dad, <laughs> tell. Tell a story about when you went to go golf and I think Joey Bashar was with you, a couple other guys, and you got pulled over. Well, that's a great story. <laughs> you got pulled over because yeah. the car, you, down, you and three other guys. I think Joey Bashar was with you. On your way to New in high school. On I don't way know, you're on your way to go golfing. But you and in three other friends oh, in the oh, Cadillac. Yeah. Ooh, I think Joey was, was with you. <clears throat> that was a good story. No. I guess it would be at about the time when you guys were little, and I played in a golfing group. Um, we tried to get together a group to go south in the middle of winter when we couldn't play here. I mean, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and four of us, got together, and let's see if I can remember the four of us. Herbie Taylorman. <laughs> Dick Goldbaum? Dick Goldbaum? No. Joey Bechera? Joey, Joe Bechera. I thought you said that. And who was the other one? Anyway. Neil, Neil Traub? No. Anyway, we started out and we were going to go down, down the mass and do Herbie Taylorman's father a favor. We'd drive his car to Florida. <laughs> and he had this big black Cadillac. And we got together and put all the clubs in the trunk and then started out driving across Route 9 and to go south. And we were going to go as far as North Carolina the second day, the first day of the second day. And just as we get off Route 9, three state police troopers <laughs> drive us right off the road. Guns out, out of the car, hands up. <laughs> and I was driving, I think, at the time. I'm going to jail. And they made me, they shook me down, made me go to the trunk and open the trunk. And the trunk, you can't see a thing in it because there's suitcases and four golf bags. <laughs> I take everything out. And they were telling us why or anything. 
They're just holding us there. With guns. Probably right shotguns. And while they're taking the stuff out of the truck, suddenly two more state troopers come by with the sirens oh, going nice. over Western Mass somewhere. And they, they could drive by with the sirens going and wave to the guys for them to follow them. Probably they decided we weren't the ones. <laughs> so they leave us standing oh, there. Oh my goodness. That's not the end of the story. So we get back in the car, we get everything loaded, and we start south. We get just past the border from Massachusetts to Connecticut. It's off the road again with state troopers. Same routine, but these were all Connecticut troopers. And we told them we'd just been stopped and they ignored us. And they did pretty much the same routine, but they were easier. And finally at the end, they said, you go ahead. I said, wait a minute, give us a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this. Sure enough, we have stopped again in Jersey. Oh my goodness, what? What had happened? The famous Brinks robbery had taken place that day in Boston. Oh. And the report was that oh. they, they had been stopped by four guys in a oh, big black, black Cadillac, and they there. had gone west. They had driven west. We, we, we have this movie about those guys. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. It's not funny. I don't understand. That's it's a famous movie. Yeah, I have a movie there about that. <laughs> that you are there. We get stopped Four guys. one, two, three times, and then oh my we God. were taken off, we weren't driven off the road, but we were taken off the road in Carolina again. And when we gave them the sign, they, they said, just keep going. <laughs> so you, you, you could make a big movie. It's in that, be funny. that story's in that book, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know this story, it's coming out. But you can make a good movie. <laughs> drama. That's a lot of drama. It's a good support. It's a good one, huh? Yeah. I always said that my support will be famous <laughs> when they finish my book about you guys. <laughs> you will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs>